At Lockheed Martin, our enterprise-wide policies are created by subject matter experts throughout the organization. For example, our policy on conflicts of interest is, is owned by the legal organization. Our policy on harassment-free workplace is owned by human resources. As an ethics officer, it's my job to provide guidance to employees and leaders and investigate any matters of misconduct, including those that are violations of policy and law. I think one of the most compelling reasons for a company to invest resources in an ethics program is not only to satisfy legal requirements, but also to attract and retain exceptionally talented people. If your company is publicly traded or if you have business with the U.S. government, you may be obligated already to have components of an ethics program. Studies have shown that companies that have an effective ethics program perform better financially. Maybe that's because they're better managed or they have a strong governance mechanism in place, but I like to think it's because they've created an atmosphere for employees to feel comfortable bringing matters forward so those issues can be resolved internally before it affects the bottom line and those matters are reported externally. There's no single way to start an ethics program, but I will share with you what I would share with a mentee in our ethics supplier mentoring program. It's about the culture, so you want to create your culture. You want to establish your company's values, and then you want to create someone to lead your ethics organization. For a larger company like Lockheed Martin, we may have a head of our ethics and business conduct organization. Uh, and that's their sole purpose, to manage our ethics program. For smaller companies, the individual may be dual-headed. They may also work in human resources, or they may work in the legal organization. Then you need to look at what are the risks within my company and engage those subject matter experts or the stakeholders to create policies and procedures that will help you mitigate any risks you have in, within your organization. You need to then train employees on the relevant policies that pertain to their job so they know what to do and where to go to if they need assistance regarding a matter. Once you have all of those components in place, then you're ready to investigate a matter that comes to the ethics office. And you're going to do that thoroughly and objectively and fairly to all parties involved where the subject, the reporting party, as well as any witnesses are going to be treated with respect. We started our program in 1995 when Lockheed merged with Martin Marietta. When I joined the organization in 2007, the program was already running smoothly. But we always are evolving and wanting our program to be as best as it possibly can. Some of the challenges we're faced with is our workforce. We're, we're around the world now. We have international sites, so sometimes there's conflicts with what exactly is a conflict of interest internationally, or is it appropriate to give this gift or receive this gift? Also, there's a strong stigma in some countries about reporting misconduct. So we need to make sure that we have a strong culture in place so we can make sure employees know it's okay to report those uh, situations internationally. We also have uh, employees that are not in your traditional office. For example, we have telecommuters that may be working from home. We have employees that may be assigned to a customer site or to a military base. Uh, so we need to make sure that those employees feel like they're engaged in a larger organization. An ethics program is a living program that adapts and responds to the ever-changing work environment. That's a great question, and I think it's engage, engage, and engage. And what I mean by that is the manager of an organization owns the ethics for that organization. The manager should be responsible for delivering any training to the employees regarding ethics. And if you think about it, that makes sense because the employee works closely with their manager anyway. So as opposed to someone from HR or legal uh, providing an annual ethics training course, it makes sense for the manager to deliver it to their employees. It also allows for the dialogue to continue throughout the year, which is important 
and it causes the manager to pause for a moment as he's preparing for the, the delivery of the training to think about his own values and how he is modeling his employees to meet the expectations of the corporation. So ethics can be dry. It's based on regulations and law and we need to get creative with making ethics an interesting topic. So one thing that I think is really critical is for the company to publish, maybe in a newsletter or at a staff meeting, some uh, issues that's happened within the company of, of wrongdoing. Of course, you would want to redact any names and protect those that were involved. And if you don't want to do that with internal uh, cases or investigations, then there's certainly a lot of activity in the news that you could use to make good discussion. And some of those topics you would want to consider regarding a review of a particular case would be uh, what caused this to happen? How could it have been prevented? What could we do within our company to prevent a similar situation from occurring? When you report an issue to the ethics office, the matter will be investigated thoroughly and consistently. And really what I mean by that is, is if I'm investigating something on the East Coast, the ethics officer on the West Coast is going to do the exact same thing, follow the same procedures that we have. So everyone is being treated consistently and fairly. But some of these investigations may require a lot of background work where we may need to uh, retrieve some computer forensics data. We may need to pull the employee's timekeeping record. Or maybe we want to review the employee's corporate credit card statement to see what charges they've been making on our credit card. So the circumstances vary depending on the severity of the allegation and the investigation. But at the end of the day, we will investigate a matter, come to a conclusion, and if it is in fact substantiated, we'll, in, we'll engage human resources to determine the appropriate disciplinary action. Now some of those actions may also require advising the customer or the federal government if it involves any type of fraudulent activity that was discovered. Education and awareness. Um, our employees know that we follow our core values. Do what's right, respect others, and perform with excellence. We do not put our business goals ahead of ethics, and our employees know if they are faced with an ethics dilemma, they should ask questions, obtain data, talk to others, and reframe the issue to resolve the matter. And if they're unable to resolve the matter, we encourage them to reach out to their manager, to their human resources representative, or their ethics officer, or someone else within the corporation as appropriate to resolve the situation. The effectiveness of the ethics program depends on the leader's commitment to ethics. It's critical for leaders to foster a culture where employees feel comfortable bringing issues forward to their manager or to human resources or to ethics. It's also important for employees to treat each other with respect and be able to have conversation with their leadership team without any type of fear of retaliation. Whether you're upper management or middle management, it's critical that we as leaders walk the talk, so to speak, from the president or CEO through all layers of management especially middle management because they're the ones that are interacting with employees probably on a day-to-day -day basis. Leaders' behavior and support for the ethics program ultimately determines the program's credibility and effectiveness. Incentives can help uh, reinforce the behaviors of a company and they're fairly easy to, to put in place. At Lockheed Martin, we have our annual merit and performance assessment where we talk about an employee's behaviors. Leaders and ethics officers are issued ethics coins, small tokens to present to employees that go over and beyond in exemplifying our core values. But quite honestly, a lot of employees don't need a tangible gift. Uh, they are satisfied with getting recognition in front of their peers. But we do have one annual award that's the highest honor within our corporation. It's the NOVA Award for Ethics. 
It's issued annually to an employee that reported an ethics or compliance breach that had potential to do damage to the corporation. This award is selected by our CEO and the award is presented by our Chief Executive Officer. Ethics is about culture. Uh, the Code of Conduct is a great place to start, but ultimately your ethics program should not just be words on a page. Your ethics program should reflect your values, and that requires an unwavering belief that ethics is critical to your business. I would like to thank DCR for participating in our ethics supplier mentoring program. I enjoyed uh, working with DCR and understanding your culture, and I commend your commitment for creating a code of conduct and an effective ethics program. If anyone is interested in resources to help them create an ethics program, I encourage you to visit our website at LockheedMartin.com. You will see many resources there that's available, and the good thing is all of this information is free of charge. So please take advantage of these free resources to help you with your ethics program so we can raise the bar for ethics and business conduct in the defense and aerospace industry and beyond.